Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the St. Nicholas podcast. My name is Eileen Vasconcelos, and I am the head of university and career guidance here at St. Nicholas Pinedos. And I've been in this role for almost six years. I am joined by the lovely Tessa Miglio as we are going to talk about how we prepare our students for university and life beyond. Also about the importance of summer programs and extracurricular activities and the holistic admissions process and how we prepare students for their university applications. Nice. Hello, everyone. I'm Tessa Miglio. I'm the university advisor on the Alphaville campus. I've been in this role for a little over a year. Um, gosh, it is lovely to be in this wonderful podcast studio chatting with you um, about such a special time in our students' lives. Definitely. It really does look so cool. I wish we had something like this when we were younger. I know. <laughs> so why don't we get started and talk a little bit about summer programs and how we encourage our learners to participate in them early on in secondary. After all, the majority of summer programs offered do happen abroad. Can you tell us how many of our students study outside of Brazil? Absolutely, Leanne. Um, about 70 to 75 percent of our students decide to study abroad at university um, every year. And in order to be able to study abroad and become independent when going to university, it's, it's really important that they have the life skills to be prepared. Um, and this is why summer programs abroad are such an excellent opportunity for self-development um, in so many ways um, for them to travel alone for the first time for them to to be away from home and family uh, and to develop soft skills such as leadership communication collaboration uh, and also hear different perspectives from students from other parts of the world um, and also aligning with the IB learner profile attributes uh, we want to mold them into uh, to be open-minded, risk-takers, and these programs really do support that. Yeah, I totally agree. I myself didn't have the opportunity to participate in enrichment programs when I was younger, but I wish I did because I know how beneficial they are. Uh, did you participate in any when you were in school? I did, Leon. Um, I participated in several language programs in Spain and in Portugal. And did those happen to be aligned with your interests as well? Is that why you decided to do those types of programs? Absolutely. I was, I've was i always been very interested in different cultures and different languages. So I studied in several, several different cities in Spain and I studied um, in two different cities in, in Portugal. Fantastic. So we mentioned how it is important for learners to consider participating in these types of programs early on in secondary, but which grade do we exactly encourage and get them started? Well, you know, this is a good question. Um, we do encourage them to start as early as grade six. So six, seven, eight, and nine, that's when they can focus on these type of programs. And then that way they can move on to more academic and career focused programs come year 10 and 11. Um, these programs are also very beneficial as students need to start to uh, reflect on their interests and possible fields of study so that they can um, make the, ne the, the correct choices when they, have to do, when they have to choose their IB subjects for, for the IB diploma. Um, again, aligning with the IB learner profile, um, these experiences support the attrib attributes of being knowledgeable and inquirers. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking, what about extracurricular, extracurricular activities? A lot of families ask how they are different to the enrichment programs. Um, and they also want to know more about how the universities um, consider them in the admissions process. Yes, that's a really good question. Um, it is important to mention that, you know, overall enrichment programs fit under the broader umbrella of extracurricular activities, which basically means anything that you're doing outside of the classroom, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of the academics of your day to day in school. So which grade exactly do we start encouraging students to participate in these programs? I mean, we said early on in secondary, but is there a particular grade that you recommend? Yes, Lynn, we actually start to encourage them as early as grade six. So six to nine, that's when they can focus on, on these type of programs. And then they can focus more on um, 
academic and career focused programs in 10 and 11. Um, and these programs are also very beneficial um, as students need to start reflecting on their interests and possible fields of study um, in order to make choices um, like choosing their IB subjects for the IB diploma. And again, aligning um, with the IB learner profile, these experiences support the attributes of being knowledgeable and inquirers. But what Definitely. about extracurricular activities, right? Because a lot of families ask how they are different from enrichment programs, which we've just spoken about. And families want to know how the universities consider them in the admissions process. Do you think you're able to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> um, and we definitely do get this asked a lot. And I think it's important to understand basically that enrichment programs falls under the broader umbrella of extracurricular activities because extracurricular activities are basically anything that you do outside of the classroom, mm -hmm. anything that you do outside of school hours. So enrichment programs, you know, are often shorter. They happen maybe over a few weeks, a mm -hmm. couple of weeks, and that's it. Whereas many other extracurricular activities are something that you do over a period of time. And, you know, I will say that a lot of our learners or pretty much all of our learners are active early on in different types of experiences. But that doesn't mean that we still don't encourage them to explore more and reflect on what they're doing and these experiences because that's going to help them have a better understanding of who they are. Um, sure. And, you know, without that, it's going to be difficult to make those choices in the future. In particular, for university admissions, I would say that admissions officers are looking at two important criteria for what these experiences are like and that's going to be commitment mm -hmm. and impact so as we were discussing before um you know if you're starting an activity early on like let's say sports or music or the arts any of those kinds of activities um, many of our students are carrying those on for many years and that's going to show their growth and also commitment. Um, it's really hard for students to show a lot of growth if it's going to be a, a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Impact is another one, which basically means how has that activity had an impact either on yourself mm -hmm. or on others? And I think this relates a lot to the service experiences and service learning that our students are involved in. So if you can imagine, um, even just recently with the tra tragedy in Rio Grande do Sul, uh, with the terrible floods, um, you know, we as a school took action, individuals took action, and it's raising money to support, you know, buying those necessary items, hygiene, clothing, so that they can get through this terrible time. Or we've had other learners who are, you know, raising money to buy blankets for houseless people during the winter time. There's so many ways in which our learners and our community are having an impact on others. And so that's the other important criteria that universities look at. Um, and, you know, I would say, although I wasn't involved in any enrichment programs over the holidays, I was quite involved in extracurricular activities. Oh, were you? And what, what were you involved in? Well, I would say for the most part, music was my strength. Oh. Uh, and I was very involved in different activities there. So from an early age, I started violin when I was in fourth grade. Uh, piano in third grade, choir in fifth grade. And although I will admit my family was the one to kind of get me started, right, when I was really young, um, I am thankful that they, you know, forced me into doing something before, but then it became my choice, right? I learned that I really enjoyed music. And when I found choir and singing, that's when I knew this was something I enjoyed even more than violin and piano. 
I, I still stuck to those instruments, but choir was definitely what I most loved. And I did carry that on into college. And I was so happy to be a part of that type of experience. Um, it was just, you know, something for me that was really important in my life. Sure. Um, also, in terms of service, I was involved in uh, the Red Cross. You've heard okay. of the American Red yeah. Cross, yes. Um, and so That's things great. like blood drives, our students have done that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, organizing a blood drive mm -hmm. or a soup kitchen to help those in need. Those are the kinds of things, you know, that I remember were really important for me and even putting into my college application, actually, that was kind of my my strength um, was talking about what I did outside the classroom, not just my grades. What about you, Tessa? What were you involved in? Gosh, well, I definitely wasn't musical, though I, I really wish I was. <laughs> so I'm quite impressed with with what you just shared here. Um, I was definitely sporty um, throughout time at school. So I was uh, part of the field hockey team, netball team and tennis team. And I started most of them, I would say, but grade four. And I stayed with them until the end of school and continued hockey and tennis throughout university. And now I just play tennis. I did not know that about you. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, see, you wanted to be musical. I also wanted to be maybe <laughs> a little bit more athletic, but we're both unique individuals. And yes. I think this is what it's all about, right? It's that we knew what we enjoyed and what our strengths were. And that's make that makes us who we are, right? And that's so important for our kids to identify as well. Um, so overall, I think it's just really important to mention, right, that quality is more important than quantity. Absolutely. Um, so even though you were involved in a lot of sports and for a while I was involved in a lot of different musical instruments, it's not about making a long list of activities mm -hmm. that's going to impress universities because in the end, again, it's a combination of both that commitment, which, you know, you need to be able to develop over time um, a certain skill or a certain activity, but also that impact. And you can't do, you know, 15 activities at the same time and say that you did 10 of them really well. Yeah, right. No, completely. Yeah. So we do always make uh, an effort to emphasize this important aspect because there is a lot of pressure, as you know, to yeah. want to get into these amazing universities. Um, and sometimes people think it's, it is about more is better, but actually one to two really good quality ones is going to make a better, bigger difference than having a long list. Absolutely. Now, in terms of university applications, I also get the question about, you know, OK, we've started early on or maybe we've started a little bit later. When do these activities matter? Right. And the short answer is that in general, universities will want to see what you're involved in starting in grade nine, which is high school. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, many of our learners are starting things early on. And that's great. If you started in grade six, a sport or an instrument or anything else, and you've carried it on, fantastic. Um, but if you started it in the beginning, you know, of secondary and stopped, it's not something you're definitely going to include into your applications. So I think wrapping up this section about enrichment programs and extracurricular activities, it's important to really understand that this is about them developing their personal development, greater self-awareness, and consequently being able to support them in making those future choices, being, being more informed, like choosing the IB diploma subjects, as you mentioned before. And since you just went through this process recently in Alpha Vili, do you think you can tell us a little bit more about how that worked? We did, Leanne. Um, we just went through this process actually with our grade 10. Um, so the IB coordinator uh, made a document for each student um, listing their grades. Um, there was feedback from the teachers. Um, we also um, included information from the Morris B profile, which is our careers platform, where it shows aptitude tests, personality and interest quizzes. Um, the students also noted down which uh, subjects they were most interested in and studying in the IB diploma. They also shared with us which countries they want to study in, what they want to study, because all of this 
is very important when choosing your IB subjects. Um, we sat down with the head of secondary, IB coordinator, myself to, to look over everything. Then we sat down individually, individually with each student. And then we sat down with the family. Um, so it was quite an in-depth process. Uh, we wanted to make sure that everyone's on the, on the correct path. Um, but it was very, very rewarding. So I think everyone's very excited to start this August. Yeah, it's a lot of different puzzle pieces to put together, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's a meticulous process as well. Mm -hmm. We really want to make sure that our learners are really getting the full picture. And that means that we have to gather all of this information to be able to present to them, okay, here are our suggestions, yeah. of course, uh, jointly with their interests and what course, they are yeah. thinking about. But uh, all of that together with all the different stakeholders is so important for them to be able to see what those next two years are going to be in the IB diploma program. Yeah. Um, and I agree, you know, just seeing that they have a better understanding of where they're heading, right? And what their goals are is what makes those next two years uh, much smoother and an easier process. Yes, no, completely, Leon. And, um, you know, once they get to year 11, it's it's even more focused on finalizing uh, their university plans, correct? Um, can you walk us through um, the, the main steps for year 11 and 12? Absolutely. I think it's, it's tough, right? Because, you know, they are not only starting the IB diploma program, mm -hmm. right, which is rigorous, two years, but they are now getting into the nitty gritty of researching the universities that they want to apply to so that they are prepared for year 12. Um, and, you know, there are many ways in which they are doing this. We have our university platform where they're able to research different universities around the entire world, mm -hmm. um, but it's also based on their profile. So they put in their information about, you know, what kind of environment they want to be in, the size of the university, the location, the approaches to teaching, approaches to learning. So again, we're circling back to the more that they have a better understanding of who they are and what they want, the better they're going to be able to make these choices and, you know, make a decision about where they actually want to apply to. Other ways in which we support them, um, they are always in contact with multiple universities around the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. They come to St. Nicholas wanting to recruit our students because they know they are well prepared. And that means that they get the opportunity to learn about what that institution has to offer, you know, opportunities in terms of scholarships, in terms of internships, but you know, what is the course that they're interested in? Does that university offer something uh, that interests them, right? Another extremely important part of them learning about the different universities that they might apply to is the requirements. Oh, yes. And as you know, the requirements vary greatly from country to country, university to university. Mm -hmm. um, so that takes a lot of work. But I think what's really great is that Holistic admissions is something that you can find pretty much in every corner of the globe. And understanding holistic admissions is basically that entrance and admission is no longer just about testing, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they are going to be looking at different components uh, aside from your grades and your tests. They're gonna be looking at what you did outside of the classroom as we have been dis discussing before, mm -hmm. but also, um, you know, what do your teachers think about you? Those letter of recommendations are important. And to many people's surprise, uh, Brazil, although most universities still rely on a test examination entrance process, there are actually lots of universities that accept the IB and also are considering different parts of the application, like essays, like interviews. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, for our learners who already are coming from and graduating from a 
education that is based on interdisciplinary learning and project-based learning. This is a perfect fit for them, not only here in Brazil, but abroad. So, you know, when they get those requirements down, they know, okay, I do need to write that motivation letter for the Netherlands, mm -hmm. or I do need to prepare for that interview at this Brazilian university, or I do need to have good relationships with my teachers uh, for the applications in the U.S. So we get that already started at the end of year 11. And then in year 12, it's just going forward and getting the, all of those aspects and pieces of the application done. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, Tessa, talking about all of this reminds me of my own, you know, college application process. Do you remember yours? I do actually, Leanne, um, but it's a good memory for me. Um, so I had always intended to stay in the UK. So I applied uh, through UCAS, chose five universities. Um, and, and as I said, for me, it was a very pleasant uh, moment in my life because I was, I was genuinely excited about the next step. Um, what about you? Yes, I'm from the U.S. and I, I never even thought about, you know, applying anywhere other than the U.S. I don't think that was really in my horizon. Um, but I applied in the U.S. and, you know, I went to a small liberal arts college and the application process, I think we'll have to leave for another podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you, everyone, for listening today. I hope you join us for our next podcast where I talk to our alumni. So thank you so much and bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.